Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this first video, we will introduce Metafactory's Visual Ontology Modeling Interface. As you go through this video, we encourage you to reproduce the examples shown here in a separate tab in your instance. Let's dive right in and have a look at the ontologies that have been loaded in our Metafactory instance. In the Ontology Catalog, accessible by going to Assets and then Ontologies from the top right menu, we see one existing ontology, the Core Organization Ontology. The Core Organization Ontology is a W3C recommendation that describes organizational structures and can support linked data publishing of organizational information across a number of domains. In the Ontology Catalog, we see some metadata for each ontology, so we see its label and status, for example, we also see some statistics, like the number of classes, attributes and relations. This ontology, for example, has 9 classes, 2 attributes and 31 relations. There are also several actions we can perform from the ontology catalog. We can create a new version from a published ontology, copy or export them, delete them, and more. Let's now navigate to the core organization ontology and explore it in more detail. As this ontology still does not have a default diagram, you will be prompted to start with an empty diagram or start a diagram from the class tree. For this example, we'll start with an empty canvas and build our diagram step by step. As you can see, the canvas is empty. But on the left, there is a panel where we can explore classes, attributes, and relations defined in this ontology. Additionally, if we click on one of the classes, for example, organization, a knowledge panel with some metadata opens up, so we see the IRI, the ontology that describes it, a brief description, but also the attributes for this specific class and all its relations, similar to the tree on the left, but for the selected class. If we click on Manage Instances, we see the instances with the type organization that already exist in our system, in this case just two, Metafax and Digital Science. We can edit the details for these instances or add new instances, but that's something we'll be doing in part 5 of this tutorial. Back to our ontology and the panel on the left, we see that at the top there is an info and metadata tab with additional information about this ontology, such as its version number, creator, creation date, and others. So let's build a diagram for this ontology. We can do this interactively by just drag and dropping classes onto the canvas. Use the search and find the classes you are interested in, and then drag them onto the canvas first with organization, then post, then role. By doing this, we'll also see the relations between the classes that we've added to the canvas. So once I've added organization, post, and role, I see that an organization can have an unlimited number of posts and a job post can be described by an unlimited number of roles. If you remember, we can see the attributes by using the knowledge panel on the right for each class. But what we can also do is use the toggle on the bottom and have all attributes displayed with the classes on the canvas. So we can see that post has an attribute that defines who that role reports to, while role has an attribute defined for remuneration. And this works the same way for all classes on the canvas. So remember that this is an ontology that already exists in our system. These classes, relations and attributes have already been defined as part of it and we are now just exploring it. So if we now go to the top left and click save, what we are saving at this point is a diagram, one specific view of this ontology. The idea behind this is that we can have several diagrams and views for any ontology to serve various user needs depending on our use case. So we can have diagrams that show more classes and diagrams that show fewer specific classes. We are always able to create new diagrams or switch between diagrams. By default, once we create an ontology and create our first diagram, this will be the default diagram, but we can, as we've seen, also create several others. So in that sense, we can use Metafactory's ontology editor not only to see and work on all classes at once, but to have a modularized view of an ontology that we create, document and share with other users. Now that we've seen what an ontology looks like in Metafactory, let's create an ontology of our own. We'll go back to the ontology catalog and create a new ontology from scratch, namely a project ontology. We will also see how to can reuse some of the classes from the core organization ontology. When clicking create new, we will be prompted to enter a title for our new ontology, while the IRI and namespace of the ontology have already been pre-filled in the form. By default, 
This will be ontologies.metafacts.com but we can change that if we want to. Additionally, customers can change the default namespace for all ontologies according to their internal guidelines and restrict users from changing these to comply with internal governance processes. Finally, we can also choose to save our ontology to Git for versioning if we want to. Now we are no longer just viewing an ontology as we did before, but we are editing one, as the buttons on the top right and the border around the canvas indicate. The first thing we are going to do is go to the Info and Metadata tab, and add a description and contributors to this ontology. Note that for ontologies created within Metafactory, the creator and contributor will automatically be pre-filled with the user who initially created the ontology, but we can still edit or extend this afterward. Additionally, every time a new user contributes to or modifies the ontology, they will also be automatically captured in the provenance metadata. Once we've taken care of the metadata, we are ready to start building our ontology. We'll first add the classes we want to reuse from the core organization ontology. For this, we will need to import this ontology into the context of our project ontology. Then, we can use the drop-down in the left panel to view the classes and the ontologies we imported and add the ones we need to our new ontology. We will be reusing the classes organization, host and role from the core organization ontology. If we now click on the organization class, the panel on the right will display all properties and attributes that have been defined in the original ontology. If we wanted, we could add new attributes to these classes to match some specific domain needs, but we cannot modify any existing attributes or properties that are not defined in this ontology, as indicated by the lock icon. To support modularization, Metafactory allows for modifying classes and attributes only from the context of the ontology in which they were created. When we click on one node, we'll see two arrows, one on the top and one on the bottom. The arrow on the top is to define a subclass relation and the arrow on the bottom is to define any other type of relation. Let's now expand our model by adding a few more classes and relations that are relevant for describing data in our domain. So we'll continue by adding person, project, and skill classes. You can add multiple classes at once by clicking on the arrow beside create class button on the bottom left of the editor and then click on Create Multiple Classes. Here each line will become a new class. Type in Person, Project, and Skill and click on Create. Once we've created these classes, they will show up on the panel on the left. You can drag them all onto the canvas, and when selecting them, we will see a form on the right. From here we can change the class's label, add a description or apply a vocabulary restriction, something we'll look into in Chapter 3 of this tutorial. Let's create a relation between our newly created class project and the existing organization class. We will call this relation involves. We can also define another relation between the class's project and person. This relation will be called member. The relations we've just created between these classes are marked in green, which means these changes have not yet been saved so as a next step we want to save the changes to the ontology. Now that we have defined some relations, let's create some attributes. Let's say that the class's project and person have the attribute label. Let's start with the class project. Select this class, and click on the link add attribute or use the attributes tab on right panel. Then click on add attribute. We'll see two options. We can either select from existing attributes or create new ones. We will be selecting the existing label attribute. The data type can be left as string. The cardinalities for this will be of minimum count and maximum count as one. Let's do the same for the class person. At this point, we can save the changes we have made to this ontology. So now, when we use this later on in forms or other exploration interfaces, we will see the label for all instances of project and person. For our use case, we also want to create two more relations. One expressing that project requires skill. and another that persons have skills with the relation has skill. Now we see that projects require skills and persons have skills. We can later on use this information in a search to get a list of all persons with a skill required for a particular project. This can also be used later on, for example as a faceted filter in a search interface. You will note that when deleting classes, for example, the editor displays all parts of the ontology that will be deleted with that class. We can cancel that. And this concludes our intro to ontology modeling. 
As a next step, you can walk through a series of hands-on exercises that will help you create your own ontology from scratch using Metafactory's Visual Ontology Editor. Thank you for watching.